This is FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch both issued reports that provide more details about civilian deaths caused by U.S. drone strikes in Pakistan and Yemen. Their findings, which cover some events that have already been reported, are nonetheless shocking. Two attacks in Pakistan that killed 19 civilians. A grandmother killed while picking vegetables with her grandchildren. Of the strikes studied in Yemen, most of the dead were civilians. The groups held a press conference in Washington, D.C. to announce their findings. The same day, the reports were on the front page of the New York Times. But they were not even mentioned on the network TV newscasts, still the main source of news for the majority of Americans. Those shows have just 20 minutes to bring you all the important news of the day, so some stories are bound to slip through the cracks. But look at what they did have time for. ABC, CBS, and NBC all covered the new Apple product announcements. NBC had a long report about family farm tourist destinations. They talked about a construction project at the U.S. Capitol building. That was also noteworthy over at CBS, where viewers saw part of a Warren Buffett interview that the network would be airing the next day. ABC led with the news that gas prices are a little lower. They also covered a possible UFO sighting in Iceland and gave viewers a long segment about a school that helps prepare dogs for air travel. All deemed more appropriate news to bring viewers than information about the country's secret bombing campaigns. Is it possible that the government shutdown might improve journalism? If you heard Face the Nation host Bob Schieffer on October 20th, you might think so. The CBS host talked about how the shutdown had hurt the owner of a nearby sandwich shop, and he went much broader. There is another part of the cost that won't show up on the accounting books. A big story like the shutdown tends to push things that often matter off the front pages in TV. Here's just one that got almost no attention. A survey out last week showed nearly half the students in our public schools, 48 percent, come from families so poor they qualify for free or reduced price meals. Even more disgraceful, a majority of students now qualify for food subsidies in 17 states across the South and West. I'd like to see our elected officials begin to focus on how we fix things like that. Like my friend at the carryout, I'm losing interest in who wins the partisan games. More coverage of poverty and things that matter would be great. But wait, Schieffer's host of a national TV show and in a position to do something about that. But right before this very commentary, he talked to Republican and Democratic senators about the effects of the shutdown and strategic moves by leaders in both major parties. In other words, partisan games. Later, he had a roundtable of Beltway journalists discussing the same thing. And viewers know that's a typical week at Face the Nation, where the most popular guest of all time is Senator John McCain, and the others are mostly white, male, Republican lawmakers and establishment journalists. So if Schieffer's really fed up with partisan games and pines to discuss poverty and inequality, that should mean at the least that he'll seek out some new guests. Finally, on November 7th, CNN will air a pro-nuclear power documentary called Pandora's Promise. The premise of the film is to tell one side of the nuclear debate, profiling a few people who were once critical of the nuclear industry and are now boosters. A New York Times review said Pandora's Promise is as stacked as advocate movies get, describing a, quote, parade of like-minded nuclear power advocates who assure us that everything will be all right, close quote. And one of the financial backers of the film, Paul Allen, is invested in nuclear power. That's the kind of conflict of interest that journalistic outlets try to avoid. Well, does the film at least get the facts right? Critics of nuclear power say absolutely not. So why is CNN giving such a one-sided show a national platform instead of a debate? That's what FAIR is asking. You can go to FAIR.org and sign our petition to CNN. I'm Janine Jackson. This is FAIR TV.